Good morning. My name is Elizabeth Stores. I'm the author of the Tales of Ancient Rome saga, which consists of three books, The Wedding Shroud, The Golden Dice and Call to Juno. I'd like to thank the Sid Sydney Mechanics School of Arts and the Thomas Keneally Library for giving me this opportunity today to talk to you. The SMSA is the oldest lending library in Sydney and has been here since 1833. Uh, the Thomas Keneally Library is part of that School of Arts. Uh, and it's still here today. It's in Pitt Street in Sydney. So I encourage you to visit it and spend some quiet time there. I'd also like to thank Berkelow's Books here in lovely Mona Vale for providing the venue uh, to be able to talk to you. So, what's my journey? Um, it took me 10 years to write the first book in this saga, The Wedding Shroud. Uh, and it uh, was a case of blood, sweat and tears and a lot of perseverance. It was uh, rewritten three times uh, before it was taken up uh, by an agent. And in fact, I moved on to another agent before it finally got a publishing contract uh, with Pier 9 Murdoch Books in 2010. Uh, however, unfortunately, when it was uh, released, it was right at the time that borders collapsed uh, and the Red Group as well. So my book disappeared off the bookshelves rather quickly after sluggish sales and I was devastated because I couldn't believe it could be reduced to a, book sh uh, a shelf life of six months after writing it for ten years. But I persevered. Uh, and in 2012, I actually uh, took opportunity to, um, to take advantage of what's called the Indie Gold Rush. And I self-published um, the books again, the, the Wedding Shroud and the Golden Dice at that stage. And to my surprise, I found an international market, just not an Australian one. And um, my book, took off, uh, both my books took off and it rose up in the rankings and it eventually caught the attention of an American publisher, Lake Union. They re-released the first two books and then they commissioned me to write Call to Juno. I've now sold tens of thousands of books in America and across the world. So what inspired me to write my saga? To, for you to understand that, I have to take you back to the cusp of the 5th and 4th centuries BC, uh, to a time when Athens was a shining light for its democracy, literature and arts. But it was also the time when Rome was nascent and struggling and fighting all its neighbours. I was reading a history book one night and I came across a image of a sarcophagus of a life-size man and woman lying on their bed in a tender embrace. And I was amazed because I knew at that time Roman women uh, were second-class citizens and they certainly weren't commemorated in death. So I had to know about this amazing civilization uh, that uh, actually commemorated women and death. And the answer led to the Etruscans the Etruscans were a little known uh, civilization to us, but at that time it was incredibly sophisticated. It was situated in the regions known as Tuscany, Lazio and Umbria now, but its influence spread across Italy and up uh, with a sea empire to the Black Sea in the north and the Mediterranean in the south. Now, the Etruscans were as enlightened as the Athenians, but there was one major difference. Uh, they gave their women education, independence, and sexual freedom. And as such, they were considered as sinful and decadent uh, by the rest of the ancient world. So I wanted to write about these people, but I knew it had to be by comparison. So it, I took up a story of a young Roman girl who comes from the austere and intolerant Rome and is married off to seal a truce between an enemy, Etruscan city of Vey, by marrying an Etruscan nobleman. 
and she comes to Vey and has to grapple with conflicting moralities because she finds out that they are quite decadent as well and involved in bacchanalian uh, rituals and also follow a death cult while also granting her this independence. What's amazing about Roman Vey is that they were only situated 12 miles apart across the Tiber River. And such were their differences that it struck me that just by crossing a mere strip of water, you could move from something akin to the Dark Ages into something similar to the Renaissance. So Cecilia comes there, she's involved in this siege, and throughout the Tales of Ancient Rome, she has to make various decisions. In the wedding shroud, she ends up falling in love with her husband and she must choose between love and they and freedom and, and Rome and duty. In the golden dice, after choosing they, she has to choose also whether to cut off ties with her Roman family especially when all of Rome consider her a traitress. And call to Juno, by this stage she has four children and there is much at stake. And she has to decide whether she's prepared to see her homeland destroyed uh, and whether she can exercise the fully the Roman within her. So I hope you might take up the chance to read my saga. As an historical novelist um, who's now written three books, I'd like to give some advice to uh, aspiring authors. The main one is to follow the credo uh, of what I call the P's, uh, perseverance the most of all, patience, practice and, pa and, and perspiration. You have to practice, you have to keep practicing writing. Um, it, it is uh, not just a, an inspirational thing, it's a skill that you need to develop. Um, so write your book, edit it and edit it and edit it. Um, and you also have to understand um, that it, the publishers are looking for something not necessarily polished, but at least um, there is, is some sort of uh, dedication to the craft. So take criticism as well. Uh, don't get completely devastated by criticism. Uh, I see it as almost a mourning process, a grieving process. You first take it and you uh, are, are kind of angry that people would uh, actually <laughs> criticize your work, you, you go into a bit of denial, but then if you move through it and get through the kind of sadness of, of feeling people might not like it immediately, that you can then go into a bargaining process where you decide what, that, what criticism you really can apply um, to make it a better book and eventually there's acceptance. So that's my advice. Um, good luck with your writing and thanks for listening to me.